from dumping reckless amounts of money into each episode to the extremely abrupt cancellation of season three. Here's why The Tick was one of the most expensive failures of a TV show. You right there, Flex. Seem a little stretched out. I uh, work in a booth at the open house. Everybody wants a little flex out of the flexometric man, if you know what I mean. Let's start with the fact that even after multiple tries, this show, sadly, is just never going to continue its story. This cult sci-fi superhero comedy show on Amazon Prime was canceled after its second season, but it hadn't really materialized in our heads back then, because we all thought, hey, maybe we'll somehow get another season if we just begged enough. But at some point, articles started coming out saying that even though the show's creator, Ben Edlund, and fans have tried hard, the show wasn't able to find a place to continue. I mean, like I heard the gun go off. It didn't happen, but I knew that it would, so I just moved. Sounds like category four minimum. No, that's crazy. Welcome to the club. First rule of the club is shut up. There aren't many details about why the show was canceled, but the fact that it was a cult show with a small niche audience could be one reason. And to address the elephant in the room, the reason could also be the huge cost of making the show. According to MSN, each episode of The Tick cost $5 million to make because it had expensive special effects and was shot in New York City. Looks like you've got all your paperwork in order. Of course it's in order, paper queen just told us that like five minutes ago. Oh, that's my sister Veranda. In fact, this put it on a list of the 25 most expensive TV shows of all time. To give you an idea of how much it costs to make a show, HBO's Boardwalk Empire cost the same amount to make episodes that were twice as long. But the show's executive co-producer, Susan Hurwitz Arneson, went on Twitter to say that it shouldn't be on the list of something like that. Looks like you two haven't found anything either. Well, uh, there's one possible spot left on the map, but it's a ways off, so... You could teleport us over there, right, Sid? Teleport? That's all kinds of neat! Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I need to have been there first for that to work, otherwise I'd just get mixed up. She said that the show's budget was never as big as Boardwalk Empire's, and that it was cut by almost 35% in the second season. Griffin Newman, one of the stars, also said that the show's budget was fine. Even though he said it was expensive, he said that The Tick wasn't nearly as expensive to make as the HBO show. You know what I think? These people are spending way too much energy trying to convince us The Tick wasn't as expensive as we think it is, which really is a bit sus. Not gonna lie. The thing is, before the show got canceled, nobody really cared about the production value and costs behind it. I think what could have gone wrong was that the show had a pretty strong following from the beginning to keep fans interested. Destiny doesn't like to be shut out. <sighs> no, that's for damn sure. How do I shut you out? <laughs> <laughs> You'll think you're going crazy, but you're not. So the producers probably thought they could spend an incredible amount on the show. After all, it was sort of destined to get great viewership numbers. Why? Well, if you've become a recent fan of the show, The Tick is a monster superhero that was made by cartoonist Ben Edlund in 1986. It started out as a mascot for a newsletter and became so popular that in 1988, it got its own comic book series. It was then turned into an animated TV show in 1994. It's come a long way since then, though, because in 2016, Amazon gave it a new start with Peter Serafinowicz in the main role. In The Tick, a superhero in a blue tick suit fights crime and is almost impossible to hurt. He also has no memory of his life before he became a superhero, and each version of the character has given him a different backstory. For example, the original comic series says he's legally insane and escaped from a mental institution, but the latest series chose to leave it a mystery. The Tick is a parody of super superheroes, which made it interesting to many people who had never seen the original story or any of the other versions. I am so sorry for our throwdown in the sewer. I've been having quite a confusing week, good and evil-wise. I got it in in my thick blue head that you were my 
villain is Nemesis. I mean, yeah, we've all watched The Boys, but that show and this one had two very significantly different vibes. Oh, and not to forget that The Tick already had a strong following building up from many years ago. But sadly, even though the show gained a lot of loyal fans, it probably wasn't as popular as Amazon wanted it to be. At the end of the day, if a show doesn't get enough viewers, it will probably be cancelled. Critics liked The Tick because it was funny and had likable characters. It was also a new way to look at superheroes since Marvel and DC tend to make them more seriously. Edlin did his best to find a new home for The Tick, but he tweeted in June 2019 that he had been unable to do so. And on top of all of this, since the actors' contracts were about to expire, the show was officially over. Edlin also said that they would keep looking for other ways to use The Tick and his friends, but the series as it was, was over. All of The Tick's adaptations have been short-lived, but hopefully, it will find a good home soon and get more than just a couple of episodes. Episodes. And keep in mind that the show's story has been evolving for many years ago. They have a lot of content to build on. So I mean, this show could have been a failure, but nothing stopping the directors and producers of the same show from producing a better, more improved version in the future. At least, I sure hope so. Back when season two of The Tick came out in April, the showrunners seemed like they were super confident about the future of the show. I mean, Edland even had season three all planned out, saying something along the lines, of how he wanted to move forward in time and catch up with what the characters would be doing. He also said that would make it possible for the Coral Reef, which is the last level, to join the party. And at that point, it could really feel like the live-action version is embracing the creativity they were able to show in the comic book. To put it more simply, it's just a hundred times more fun. It sounds like Edlin was itching for a time jump, which has become a popular TV plot device in recent years. And that would make sense, given how much The Tick and Arthur have already done in their own own time. In season 1, Arthur and the Tick did what seemed impossible. They beat the terror. Then in season 2, they learned how to deal with the red tape of being a superhero and even got some bad people out of Aegis. If you keep all of this in mind, it's pretty obvious Edland has spent a significant amount of time building up the story. And at that point, more than him, the fans were more upset about this story not utilizing its full potential. Many times, Prime Video or Netflix has canceled a show that everyone had been looking forward to for a long time. And hey, I'm not gonna lie, even I've been part of campaigns that have pressured Netflix into bringing a show back, but rarely do we see that actually bring any form of change in the world of Netflix. And that's exactly what happened in Season 3 of The Tick. Even though the show became very popular, it just wasn't renewed. A lot of people have also talked about how they'd watched Season 1 and were looking forward to Season 2, but then they heard that Season 3 had been cancelled. I frankly think the world needs a hero like The Tick more than ever right now. Edlin's complicated brand of idealistic optimism, mixed with the harsh and funny realities of government politics and bureaucracy, strikes the perfect, ironic, yet hopeful tone. Even though it doesn't shy away from the boring, complicated things that often slow people down, the message is that you should choose love over fear. The Tick chooses to love, and from that comes everything that keeps the world in balance. Plus, the end of the season will set up what looks like it will be an epic and interesting season 3, or a sequel, or I don't know anything at this point, and I really don't want to miss it. And that, folks, is all for why The Tick was one of the most expensive failures of a TV show.